Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of PCT Retro Gaming, coming at you with a new title on a new system. This is the SNES title, Lufia 2 Rise of the Sinistrals. And yes, Lufia 2. We're not playing the first one because technically this is the prequel to the first one. Now, for a little bit of lore, because, you know, this is spoilers. If you've never heard of this game before, it was kind of an under the radar uh, role playing game for the, the Super Nintendo. I feel like it was a great game. I don't even remember how I first came across this game. I don't know if it was just like, oh, this game looks cool. I like role-playing games. Let's play it. And we rented it from Blockbuster or whatever we were using at the time. And I feel like this game is, is extremely unique. Uh, it adds different aspects to your normal role-playing game that a lot of other games really didn't do. Like there are puzzles and there is monster manipulation and there is a a really diverse uh, magic system uh, and all that kind of stuff. There's there's a 99 level dungeon that you unlock at a certain point of the game and you can do a new game plus that you can actually go through and try to beat it with whatever party you you decide to do. And I mean, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's, it's a really cool game. Um, like I said, this is a prequel to the original Lufia, and the reason that being said is your, your main character, Maxim, and a, a character that is introduced later, which I'm not going to give away too much spoilers, uh, they end up getting married, they have a baby, and that baby ends up becoming the main character of Lufia 1. In fact, in Lufia 1, the very beginning of that game, there's like a prologue, and it kind of teaches you about the combat and all that kind of stuff, and that prologue happens to be the final party that you have in Lufia 2. It, 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 it's really neat. Um, I enjoy it a lot. So uh, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and start a new game. Um, I'm not going to bore y'all with all the intricacies of the game, but I'm going to go ahead and show y'all some stuff because it does give a good idea of what the game is really about. So you're Maxim, you're a monster hunter, you're in this small town, and this is Tia, and she's kind of like, I guess, your childhood friend. And so they, they go back and forth, you know, she ends up accompanying you on your journey for a little bit, but she's not really much of a fighter. She's more of like a cook slash storekeeper. And so she really can't help you save the world when Maxim has been destined to save the world. He and three other people, which uh, a woman is part of that, um, much like Earthbound, but anyways, are supposed to save the world. So you can see, like, right here, she says a shop owner would be a good job. And he's like, yeah, whatever, whatever. And she gets all, you know, pouty. Anyways, so uh, that's kind of their dynamic. But the reason that I wanted to show you all the beginning is so you have your menu and you have a whole bunch of different things. Like, so let's see the status. I mean, it, it's a pretty it's a pretty good status. Uh like mix that you have you know attack power defense strength agility and intelligence and then guts and then mgr which i'm not sure what mgr is whatever obviously i know <laughs> a terribly uh, high amount about this game but but so you it's just a great game like if y'all can't tell the music's wonderful we're about to go outside and to me i always felt like the overworld music in a game really defines a role-playing game because you're going to hear it a lot and so i feel like if you have a role-playing game which we'll is we'll just let it play a little bit i mean it's kind of like you know oh i'm going on this adventure everything's kind of good like i feel you know i mean it, it's it's like a little uplifting it's got a good range i mean super nintendo had some great music but i feel like this game in particular had some really good music um some of my favorite music in this game is from like the big towers and like the, the mountains and that kind of stuff. This is a song that you'll hear way too often in the game and love it or hate it. It's with you because basically this is the dungeon song. So anyway, so this guy, this old man is going to teach us, I'm going to skip through all this, but he's basically teaching us about how to do the puzzles. And so battle system battle music is also something i feel like is extremely important with role-playing games because you're you're doing a lot of battles all right so your battle system you have uh, magic you have you can defend you can use items or you can use a uh, i think it's called an ep or xp attack ip sorry 
And basically what that means is that all of the equipables, some of them will have an IP attack associated with it. And those IP attacks will drain your IP meter, which you can see right now actually has no, nothing in the gauge. So it's empty. Now you collect IP by getting hurt. And the closer you are to dying, the more IP you gain when you, when you get attacked. So a uh, very simple enemy. We're, we're made to destroy him first hit. Not a big deal. Classic role-playing game. This is the tutorial. Oh yeah, I'm going to teach you how to do everything. So the one thing that defines this game that I feel like other games maybe didn't have is coming up right here. And it's a skills menu. Now your skills menu, you end up accumulating a whole bunch of different skills. The first one you get is the arrow, and the second one you get is the reset spell. We're about to get to the reset spell. And so basically they say you equip the skill. So if you hit select, then you have your arrow. And then as you can see, it circles around for many other things, uh, much like Secret of, of Mana, how it has this like circular thing to select. So if I shoot my arrow, it will stun the enemy. Now I can move around, I believe it's six steps that the enemy will be stunned. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, eight steps. Another cool thing is you can slash your sword. Now, not only does that make the monster move because it counts as a step, but it can also be used to cut grass and vines away from walls. Now we're gonna go ahead and kill these guys. All right, so you can see I got hit and my IP meter went up. So that is how you accumulate IP power. Now, the other cool thing about having the skills, which he explains here, is that they can be used to manipulate items in the in the world, in the overworld. Oh, so I can shoot him too, apparently. So that will make the switch go back and forth, which you, know, you can also actuate switches using your A button. So it's a neat little way to get through dungeons when you may not be able to access a switch from where you're currently at. Uh, you can also push blocks. Like this, we're supposed to push it over the little spot on the ground. Oh, and so here's the reset spell. And as soon as we get it, I'll equip it and I'll show y'all what it does. But basically what he's explaining is that the reset spell, if you were to mess up a room by doing the puzzle wrong, then the reset spell would allow you to redo the entire room. And the, re the room will be redone with all the enemies and everything too. Um, I'm not sure if that means that you can like just farm experience all right so this will reset the room now you can see the room is completely reset other than him and then i can do the puzzle again so so the sword slash gets the wall it'll slash the vines so it's kind of neat all right and we're almost done with this and then i'm going to go ahead and jump ahead to some of the more kind of the more iconic parts of this game um, this is going to be a basic like overview of my thoughts on the game and how I how I enjoy the game and you know different things about it and this is a gem that I really feel like a lot of people should pick up if they've never touched it before. It's not, I would say, as popular as the Final Fantasy series or the Dragon Quest series or anything like that, but I also feel like it deserves a place in somebody's role playing game, you know, library because it's it's really unique. Uh, the battle system. Is, is easy to, to get a hold of. Um, it's not really tricky. Uh, it is turn-based, and you end up getting uh, three other characters that all have different agilities and strengths and all that kind of stuff. And so you'll have like a powerhouse that can take the damage, and you know, kind of your tank character. You'll have a magic user. You'll have a healer, and then you'll have Maxim, who is just kind of like an overall. Oh, oops! I keep talking to him. So here's where you can slash the little grass step on the switch and then here's another aspect of the game that's kind of neat is that you have these areas that you can set pots onto and that they will um you know manipulate the environment so you can pick up the pot with a set it on that another cool thing is if you hold the r button you can turn without actually moving a step and so that will be helpful when you have enemies that are very uh, fast compared to you and every single step you take they might take three or something or they might teleport and so you want to make sure that you are able to kind of adjust yourself so that you don't get caught up with the enemies like getting attacking you 
another cool thing, and, and other games have, have kind of had this, well, you can get the initiative if you attack the enemy from behind. And they can also get the initiative on you if they attack you from behind. So it does play into the whole you want to hit the enemy at a specific part. But I just wanted to show you all this basic tutorial little area because this is definitely kind of the, the ground, I guess the groundwork of the game. And it does show how the game's dungeons are manipulatable based on you know your skills and oh, oops huh, and based on the enemy placement and all that kind of stuff so I mean, there's a level system you can see maxim has 29 uh, more experience to go before he gains the next level All right, and we're gonna leave it off from here. Uh, when we come back, I'm going to go ahead and showcase some of the other stuff that makes this game pretty unique. Um, we have vehicles in this game that can go above water, uh, underwater, in the air, so it's pretty neat. But yeah, so we will uh, we will cut to that, and then I can show you all that kind of stuff, and we'll get we'll get some more music in, we'll get some more kind of fighting in and stuff too. So we'll see you on a little bit. We fast forwarded to a different section of the game, um, obviously using a different save file. There's no way I could have gotten this far this fast, but we are about 16 hours into the game. And as you can see, we have a full party here, uh, Maxim, Guy, Seelin, and Lexus. And the part of the game that we're in now, I'm pretty sure since we have Lexus, is that we are trying to get material in order to make our ship, which I will show you right here. Oops be able to go underwater and into the air. So as you see, we have a little boat. Uh, it can dock basically at any single part. But the real reason we're here is because I wanted to show y'all the mountain music, which is, which is pretty awesome. We're gonna listen to it for a little bit. This is a much better dungeon music, I would say, than the other one. Uh, we also have many more items in our skill set. Uh, as you can see, we have a hammer, a bomb, a hook, and a fire arrow. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe this is the entirety of the skills. So the one thing I want to show you right now is the hammer, because this is one of the later items that we get. And what the hammer does is it's basically like this big fist that shoots out. And what it can do is it can push pillars, but it can also break down doors that, that may or may not be... Um, easily broken and it can also harm enemies in the same essence that the arrow could do so as you can see we've already gone through here um, this is just to kind of show that we you know your, your skills get more diverse uh, as you can see as I move the enemies like that one is chasing me and you can block him by using other enemies you can hit him come behind I don't think we actually got him behind but another thing to show y'all is the IP that so as you can see here maxim is equipped with um, different items that will allow him to do various uh, effects so like trick and menace those are status effects for either the party or for the enemies magic cure i believe just restores mp um, there's a way of, of being able to see it i don't oh that's not what i wanted but um, maxim also has a weapon equip that makes Basically anything that's vulnerable to fire just go way down. As you can see, he's doing six times the amount of, of another character. Now, you might notice that there's a fifth character in our party, and his name is Fumi. And Fumi is a capsule monster. And let me show you all what that is. Oops. Capsule monsters are things that you can find. They're, 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 they're monsters that you can find throughout the game, and they will... Uh, accumulate strength and they will accumulate levels based on how you feed them and how you uh, use them in battle so right now you can see fumi is at level or class three and there's five classes for each of the elements he is a neutral element and then you have light element wind soil and fire that's what i have now there's also a dark and a water which i have not collected yet and all of them can go up in different uh stages or classes until they get to the uh, the top one now i talk about feeding so they like to be fed weapons and items and as you can see right here he is requesting a war rapier and i don't have one if i did it would flash and it would tell me hey you have one in your inventory but what we can also do is feed him something else so like 
this fire dagger, for example, I can feed him. And he likes it, right? So his growth goes up. And certain items are going to make his growth go up much, much quicker than other items. Uh, there will be like this deadly sword, for example. He didn't like it, so he ate it, didn't like it, it just got rid of it. Now, I'm not worried about this because I'm not going to save this kind of stuff. But basically, you just feed him until he this growth meter goes all the way up, and then that's when he will join, uh, level up to the next class. I feel like this is an interesting aspect of the game. They, it's not a make or break scenario, but I will say there are certain capsule monsters that are better than others. Um, and there are certain capsule monsters that a certain classes are better than others. And I believe the wind at either three or four is really, really good. But then if you master it, it then it's not so good. <laughs> Um, maybe the same with the, I don't know, I just remember there, there's a couple of them, and I believe it's, it's either the light or the wind. They, they do crazy healing, which is awesome, because it's just the fifth person to heal your party, so you don't have to, you know, waste a, a attack or a turn with your other character in order to heal your party. So I think that that's awesome. But again, it does take a lot of items to feed them to get them all the way into the next class. So like, if I were to feed him now... You know, he liked that, but he didn't like that. So it's just, it just depends. Um, it's like Yummy Yummy is probably one of the best, unless you have exactly what they're looking for. And then they'll say like, oh, thank you, or something like that. You can also get uh, different foods that are, I might have one, I'm not sure. Yeah, so you have this flame fruit and breeze fruit. Uh, so if I change it to the fire guy, and I feed him the flame fruit. It says wowie, but it's not really making that much of a difference. So, I'm see if I can show y'all exactly how the uh, leveling up works as I, as I blow through all my items. So here we go. He's about to upgrade to the next level, and it's just kind of a neat little thing that that you can just add to your party. I feel like it's a unique part of the game that other games may or may not have actually had. And so now he is a class two, and so his attributes will change. I mean, he's at level one. Oh, he's level 15, I'm sorry. So, I mean, he's, he's still pretty weak because I think my average party level is about 30 something. So either way, um, just kind of a neat little thing. But uh, I do feel like the game is definitely one to pick up if you have the game in your library just because you're a collector i would definitely say you know give it a give it a good try go through play it yeah there's some parts of the game that are frustrating there's some puzzles that are frustrating um definitely some parts of the game that are difficult the sinistrals themselves can be kind of a bear especially if you're under under geared under leveled um this is a game that you're gonna have to grind a little bit thankfully there are some enemies in the game that are nice to grind on they're these little uh, cubes and they have like a red or a blue or a green dot in the middle of them and basically those are your like metal slimes like if you're familiar with the dragon quest series and they give massive amounts of experience but they also run away very very quickly basically anytime they they sense a threat they'll run away and so if one of them attacks you when you fight them then that's like awesome because now you have a chance to actually hurt them so you want to use like magic on them that kind of stuff but it's it's a game that I feel like definitely deserves a playthrough all the way through. Uh, it's a really great story. The, uh, I mean, I guess I could spoil it now since this game's been out for forever, but Maxim and Sealand end up falling in love, end up having a baby. There's a cinematic event where it shows the different seasons, the baby grows up, gets stolen, and all that kind of stuff. So I would definitely say play the game so that you can see all of that. Um, a lot of areas to explore, many, many different, they're not continents, but countries separated by water. Uh, you can go underneath the ocean, and you can go in the sky, and that's how you kind of get to the different parts of the game. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show it, but there, the, the dungeon, the 99 bottomless floor dungeon, I've never actually beat it, but there are speedrunners that just do that category, and what they'll do is they'll try to get through all 99 floors and beat the final boss, and sometimes you can't beat the final boss because it's a random uh, generated dungeon with random enemies and random treasure chests, and those that's the thing, because you can't bring anything with you unless you've, you've accumulated a uh, super weapon, basically, that means that you can bring it in and out of the dungeon. And I don't have any of those now, but you end up finding them if you do the dungeon enough, and that's kind of neat 
because then you can go through and get more and more powerful weapons and that kind of stuff. But I would say this game is definitely one that um, I've played through multiple times. I love the game. Uh, the music itself is one that, like the soundtrack just keeps me coming back. And the game, the gameplay, the, the, the artwork, the enemy art, all that kind of stuff, I feel like it's just super neat. Um, it's challenging, but it's not overly challenging. It's not unfair, I would say that if you are one that likes leveling characters and you like just you know grinding out experience points and all that kind of stuff then this game rewards you by not making it too difficult you can get through basically any situation without having to have the best strategy you could brute force your way through it if you're strong enough and i feel like some role-playing games nocturne comes to mind doesn't allow you to do that if you play it on the hardest difficulty you have to Make sure that you find every enemy weakness and exploit that. And if you don't, then they will definitely mow you over. And this game doesn't do that. It's it's a pretty easy game to pick up, um, especially with the idea that you can reset rooms if you were to do a puzzle incorrectly. Um, I mean, obviously, we're in the day of the Internet age and we have access to unlimited information. So if you have a puzzle that's really giving you a hard time, you can just look up the solution. So it's not a big deal. But back when I first played this game, you didn't have that choice. And so you had to use the reset spell multiple times in order to really get the, uh, the whole game completed. So we're going to exit out of here. But yeah, so. Uh, the fire arrow and the, and the rest of the stuff, uh, basically, they all have a specific um, way that you would uh, get through, you know, dungeons and that kind of stuff. The fire arrow can destroy grass uh, in its in its uh, trajectory, so that's kind of neat. But overall, I feel like this game is, I mean, definitely definitely one of my top games to uh, on the on the SNES. It's one I played a lot. I probably put a lot of hours into it compared to other games. Um, it's definitely not going to be up there, or I would say it's up there with Earthbound and Final Fantasy VI, but those two I feel like are better overall. But I also feel like, for me, they were a much better game and, and more, uh, I don't know, just they, they meant more to me in my youth than this game did. But this is a game that I can still run through because it's very easy to pick up, and like I said, the artwork is great. So, as you can see, that guy teleports, which means that he can teleport behind you, or I can just run into him. And you can use the little mooring star or whatever, the hammer, to manipulate that block on the other side of the spikes. So, kind of neat. But yeah, that's going to that's gonna pretty much do it for me for this. It's just a little quick perspective of how this game is and and you know why i like it and all that kind of stuff and i hope y'all enjoyed this so we're gonna go ahead and finish this out and i'm gonna leave y'all with the with the music from the mountain to kind of i'm gonna go ahead and just use a, a fire spell on them but yeah i hope if, if anybody has this game they they give it a they give it a try let me know what you think. Let me know down in the comments. Have you played this game? Is this something that you you really enjoyed? Is this something that you've never touched before because you weren't quite sure, but now you're kind of thinking, oh, maybe I do want to play this game. You know? Oh, yeah, that's going to do it for me. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this. Uh, drop a like below. Let me know what you think. If you're new to the channel, let me know if you like this kind of content. You know, both people that are new and old. Let me know if you like this content and I'll start doing more of these. Uh, Role-playing games are difficult to kind of like give a full experience to. So I feel like if I do a perspective on it, you know, quick little video to show my thoughts about it. You know, should you play the game or not? All that kind of stuff. I feel like that'll be a much better way to kind of introduce a game than play it through its entirety since this would be multiple tens of hours but yeah so i appreciate all the help like and support and um yeah so that's gonna do it for me so we'll see you in the next video